approaches you are about to see for selling Corvair over competition are in the language car prospects understand. These approaches are based on comparisons and interpretations of figures and features. Exact dimensions are omitted. Detailed facts are tabulated in folders which you will receive after this film. Now, the selling story on Corvair. The one for 61. The only one. Only an expert can tell if this is the one and only Gainsborough Blue Boy or one of the many excellent copies which have been done over the years. In the same way, only a man who's driven and lived with a Corvair knows that it's the one true thrift car on the market for 61. The only one designed completely to fit exactly the wants and needs of a growing number of thrift conscious Americans. Some U.S. cars claim they're designed for the thrift car market, but miss the mark. European cars, such as Volkswagen, fall far short of the U.S. thrift car concept as represented in Corvair. Corvair is a just right car, with true thrift car proportions, inside and out, with adequate luggage room, and designed for family motoring. First, let's see why Corvair is more of a thrift car than Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic 6. The creation of the Unipack power team, combining engine, transmission, and rear axle into one efficient unit, brought about Corvair's thrift car size and ideal 40-60 front and rear weight distribution. Extra weight on the rear wheels gives Corvair up to 30% more traction and nearly equalized braking on all four wheels. In contrast, Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic are nose heavy. The front wheels are too heavily loaded and rear wheels are too lightly loaded for good traction or road holding when braking. Less weight on front wheels makes possible Corvair's easier cornering, steering, and handling, and eliminates the need for power steering, a highly desirable option on Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic. The Corvair features a new independent rear suspension with a swing type rear axle. Each rear wheel flexes independently, enabling Corvair to walk over bumps instead of bouncing over them. A big factor determining the quality of a car's ride is the relationship between the sprung weight and the unsprung weight. Sprung weight is the total weight suspended by the springs. Unsprung weight is the weight carried by the tires when the sprung weight is removed. The greater the ratio of sprung to unsprung weight, the better the ride, because up and down movements of wheels passing over bumps don't cause as much up and down movement of the car's body. In other words, the lower the unsprung weight, the more stable the car. In the Corvair, the unsprung weight is reduced because the differential and final drive gear case are mounted to the integral body and frame and are a part of the sprung weight. However, cars like Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler have heavy differentials and rear axles. These items are a big part of the unsprung weight of the cars. That's why Corvair's ride is much better. The Corvair's five and a half inch wheel rims are one inch wider than the rims of Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic 6, giving the same kind of extra stability that a snow ski gives over an ice skate. Corvair's air-cooled turbo air engine eliminates freezing in the winter, boiling in the summer. Corvair's muffler is near the engine where engine heat helps prevent condensation, thus reducing possibility of corrosion. Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler have front-mounted water-cooled engines with mufflers too far away from the drying effects of engine heat. Condensation can cause the mufflers to rust. Corvair has a fully unitized monostrut body by Fisher with front fenders solidly welded to the body. Here's extra rigidity, safety, and durability that's so necessary in a car of this size. The bodies of Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic with bolted-on fenders, lack the rigidity of fully unitized construction. The virtually flat floor of the Corvair is like a living room floor after the kids have gone to bed, neat and uncluttered. Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic have drive shaft tunnels which subtract from foot room. Corvair, with an eye to safety, has located its parking and direction signal lights in the integral dual headlight unit above the bumper out of harm's way and easily seen. On the other hand, Comet, Valiant, and Lancer have located their front parking and direction signal lights right in the bumper, where they're hard to see 
and also in danger of being damaged or being hidden by mud or snow. Rambler Classic has its parking lights below the bumper, where they're even harder to see and in greater danger of being damaged and covered by mud and snow. Other Corvair advantages over the Comet, Valiant, Lancer and Rambler include a better protected fuel tank, ideal to load front luggage compartment, choice of four-speed manual transmission, single key locking, magic mirror acrylic lacquer finish, and safety plate glass all around. Safety plate glass, unlike the safety sheet glass used by these competitors, is ground and polished for the finest in viewing. Yes, the Corvair has many common advantages over Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic 6. But that isn't all. The Corvair has specific advantages over each one of these cars. Let's take the Comet first. Comet's advertising says it's longer than other so-called compacts, thus implying that it's bigger. True, it is longer, wider, and higher than the Corvair. Corvair, however, has just as much room inside where it counts. As a matter of fact, Corvair has more front hip and leg room and more rear hip and head room in four-door sedans than Comet. The 23.5 to 1 overall steering ratio of Corvair is faster than Comet's 27 to 1 giving sports car handling. In addition, Corvair's 6 inch shorter wheelbase and 14.8 inches shorter overall length make for better maneuverability. Bonded brake linings in the Corvair give longer wear than the riveted Comet linings. Furthermore, rivets can dig and score the Comet brake drums. Mechanical valve lifters on the Comet can get noisy and thus require periodic adjustments. Hydraulic valve lifters on Corvair's turbo air engine are quiet and do not require periodic adjustment. Electrical windshield wipers in Corvair mean constant steady wiping for clearer windshields. Vacuum-operated wipers on the Comet can slow down and falter when they're needed. This can be dangerous when passing or on hills and curves. In comparing Corvair to Valiant and Lancer, keep in mind that basically the Valiant and Lancer are the same car. True, there are some grill, trim, and rear end differences. Also, the Lancer is five inches longer and nearly two inches wider than the Valiant. But these are the only major differences in exterior and interior dimensions. Corvair excels over Valiant and Lancer in many ways, including bonded brake linings instead of riveted for longer lining life, 13% larger windshield for better visibility, and hydraulic valve lifters instead of mechanical for quieter engine operation. For extra riding comfort, Corvair has more room than Valiant and Lancer, more rear headroom, more rear entrance room, more front leg room, and more front and rear hip room and a virtually flat floor. Corvair's aluminum turbo air engine has a low silhouette and its weight is balanced between the wheels. Valiant and Lancer's higher and heavier cast iron engines are slanted, causing a weight concentration on the right side of the car. This can cause erratic steering and uneven tire wear. This is like a Dutch girl carrying one heavy bucket. It pulls her out of balance. However, when the girl carries two evenly balanced buckets, she walks upright. She's in better balance, like Corvair. Now let's look at Rambler. The Rambler Classic 6 is on the same wheelbase as Corvair, 108 inches. It's true that Rambler has more hip room and shoulder room than the Corvair. It also is 9.8 inches longer than Corvair. But every bit of this extra length is overhang. And who wants 9.8 extra inches of overhang? Corvair's modern thrift car styling and design is especially apparent in a comparison of Corvair and Rambler Classic 6 four-door sedans. Corvair's rear door tapers forward out of the way. Rambler Classic's thrusts rearward, ready to bump an unsuspecting passenger. Yes, the Rambler Classic is a sharp car. It has many sharp points. For example, screw ends are exposed. Hood latch and door sill plates have sharp edges, but Rambler covers some sharp edges too. Putty is used to hide sharp welding seams in the trunk. There are other shortcomings in the Rambler Classic. The parking brake release interferes with the air vent control knob when it's pulled out. Rambler this year is advertising a ceramic coated muffler that resists corrosion. Remember, ceramic is a brittle material and may be broken and chipped by flying rocks. 
Corvair's zinc-coated muffler near engine heat minimizes condensation. Corvair has more economy features than the Rambler Classic 6. For instance, Corvair uses much less oil than Rambler. Following owner's manual recommendations, in 12,000 miles of driving, a Corvair owner would change oil three times to a Rambler owner seven. This means the Corvair owner would buy only 13 quarts to the Rambler owner's 32. Also, the Corvair owner in the same period would buy only two oil filters to the Rambler owner's five. Corvair's windshield wipers are electric. Rambler's are vacuum. Corvair has one key locking, while Rambler's two key system compounds confusion. Let's see. A Rambler owner uses the octagonal head key to close the tailgate window, then he changes to the round head key for the tailgate. To get into the driver's seat, he switches to the octagonal head key. Once inside, he uses the round head key to get into the glove compartment. To get going, he needs the octagonal head key for the ignition. By this time, he's probably feeling like a Mun key. Without doubt, the Corvair offers more than Comet, Valiant, Lancer, and Rambler Classic 6. But what about European cars like Volkswagen, which were purchased mainly for gas economy? However, people buy cars for other reasons, too. Corvair owners cite Corvair's up-to-date styling as one of the two main reasons why they prefer Corvair to Volkswagen. Also, Volkswagen hasn't changed styling in 13 years. Corvair has the room and comfort for U.S. motoring. Corvair sedans have room for six, while Volkswagen can carry only four or five. This is the main reason why Corvair owners bought Corvair instead of a foreign car. Yes, Corvair has more room inside than Volkswagen. 1.5 inches more rear headroom, 8 inches more front shoulder room, 6.5 inches more rear shoulder room, 10.5 inches more front hip room. Corvair has more than four times as much luggage carrying capacity in the front compartment as Volkswagen. If more room is desired, Corvair provides it with the optional rear fold-down seat. Corvair has the roadability and safety desired by American drivers. Corvair is more solidly built has more road weight. Corvair has a longer wheelbase with wider front and rear wheel treads. It's longer, wider, but lower. And Corvair has safety plate glass in all windows as well as the windshield. Corvair has the power needed for U.S. motoring. Volkswagen, with only 40 horsepower, just doesn't have enough going power. It offers only one transmission, a four-speed manual. Corvair offers three, including an automatic transmission, which so many Americans demand. One of the most important advantages Corvair has over Volkswagen and other foreign cars is that Corvair parts and service are available at every Chevrolet dealership, number one everywhere in the USA. Volkswagen owners often must drive long distances for service or wait long periods of time for parts. Other European vehicles on the market are the Volkswagen Microbus and Combi. The Combi is a multi-purpose version of the Microbus. However, the Greenbrier sports wagon serves the functions of both much more efficiently. For example, the Greenbrier can carry nine passengers in comfort. As a cargo carrier, the Greenbrier can haul over five more cubic feet of cargo than the Combi. When used as a passenger vehicle, the Greenbrier can carry 14 more cubic feet of luggage behind the third seat than the Volkswagen Greenbrier. Convenient. It's easier to load with a wider rear door opening and a 10 inch lower cargo floor. Movable windows on the Greenbrier roll down. Windows on the Volkswagen either slide back or push out on a hinge. The Greenbrier is built for better going with husky power, twice the horsepower of the Volkswagens. In addition, the Greenbrier has wider wheel treads and bigger tires. Now let's see the Greenbrier's advantages over the Ford Econoline station bus. In the Ford, the engine rides up with the passengers. The driver and the front seat passenger practically sit on the engine. This limits top capacity in Ford's bus to eight passengers and the engine, instead of nine, as in the Greenbrier sports wagon. Engine heat and noise are constant companions in the Ford bus. The Ford engine is not isolated from passengers like the rear-mounted engine of the Greenbrier sports wagon. There's possibility of wear of engine cover seals, which could leak engine heat inside the Ford bus. The Greenbrier's engine is easy to reach. The engine of the Ford bus can't be reached even for checking water and oil without disturbing the passengers. There's always a chance of greasy seats in the Ford. Quiet hydraulic valve lifters on the Greenbrier engine do not need periodic adjustments. 
The Ford engine has mechanical valve lifters, which after a time get noisy and need adjusting. The Greenbrier has a large 18.6 gallon fuel tank, while the Ford bus has a small 14 gallon tank. Sensible planning in the Greenbrier provides a cargo space behind the third seat, nearly four feet long. Awkward planning on the Ford thrusts the engine to the rear, pushing back the seats so there's a cargo space only two feet long. Except in front, the windows of the Ford bus do not roll down as they do on the Greenbrier sports wagon, but push out like they do on the Volkswagen microbus. Two windows on each side of the Ford bus can't be opened. In the Greenbrier, the second and optional third seats may be arranged to face each other with a table in between. The seats of the Ford bus do not have this flexibility. The Greenbrier can be converted into a complete camping home. The custom camper unit converts the Greenbrier into a combination bedroom, living room, and kitchen. This unit, especially designed for the Greenbrier, consists of couch bed polyfoam cushions, kitchen counter, rear storage wall, vinyl floor, drop leaf table, cooler, jug, stove, and drapes. A tent unit, a shelter tarpaulin, a luggage rack, a top sleeper unit, and a desk are also available. Greenbrier has the stamina for camping or hunting. The Greenbrier has independent four-wheel suspension that walks over bumps, while Ford's rigid front and rear axles give plenty of bounce to the ride. Then, too, the Greenbrier has a longer wheelbase and more road weight. Yes, the Greenbrier sports wagon is the one for 61, the only one in its field. It's designed completely for a new American market while the Volkswagen Microbus and Combi and the Ford Bus make attempts to fill this distinct and wide open market. In the same way, Corvair, whether it's compared to foreign cars such as the Volkswagen or American cars such as Comet, Valiant, Lancer and Rambler Classic 6, has many advantages because it's truly designed as a family car and a thrift car. Yes, in any area of comparison, the 1961 Corvair is the one for 61, the only one.